a couple weeks ago to some of us about the stigmas that come with found footage films and you seem to have successfully sidestepped some of those with this film so that's good. Was was Chronicle always going to be found footage or was there ever iterations during the process that maybe it was going to be like a straightforward narrative at all? No, it always it was always a, a found footage idea because I, I really wanted to embrace the challenge of doing something like this and then taking it to uh, a, a, a kind of an elevated place um, and uh, to make a movie that um, works as found footage but begins as this uh, more like a personal documentary or sure. almost something that you would see at Sundance in the documentary competition where it's about this kid who's having problems at home and he begins documenting it and the footage would play out as raw and untampered from shot to shot. No score, all sort of diegetic soundtrack and, and background um, and to, to stick by rules like that and then to let the camera work evolve as the, more, the fantastical element of the film comes into play. Um, it just seemed like an idea that couldn't really be done any other way and be as kind of fresh and as interesting in, uh, in a movie sense. Uh, there were always, you know, um, it's always scary to sort of try to do something new or what perceived as new because, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of money that's put behind it. I mean, we had a relatively small budget for this am ambitious kind of a movie, but there was talk of, uh, you know, early on, like, I don't know, wait, should it be a hybrid or, uh, you know, like a thing? And it's like, no, 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 we have to, this is uh, how it's going to work. It's going to be great. People are going to be able to naturally accept it. The film speaks a lot to, like, the YouTube generation. You specifically came from kind of that yeah. background where you're short, uh, led to Chronicle. Can you talk a little bit about how you see the YouTube generation of filmmakers having a positive effect on, on Hollywood films? Well, I, I think... Uh, we see uh, kids kids uh, um, uh, get their information so differently than they used to even 10 years ago because high quality streaming video has uh, um, uh, lets us see uh, everything that's going on in the world immediately as it's happening and uh, we see crazy stuff on uh, coming off of CNN and like you know wartime stuff like things that we normally see in big movies, but we get to see how it looks in real life all the time. We see extraordinary things on the internet that come from real life. And that has changed the way in which young audiences um, uh, see visual effects in movies that they pay to go see in theaters. And I, I don't blame young audiences for being not interested in, in what the, the their local cinema has to offer because they see, you know, more real stuff uh, uh, online for free. Um, so I think a lot of uh, filmmakers and people who who um, put their stuff on on YouTube, they're they're having to live up to a certain uh, standard um, uh, visually um, to to get people's attention. It's all about you know getting attention. Um, so. Uh, we wanted to make a movie that could live up to that standard and at the same time be a, a movie movie as opposed to just sort of an experiment. Speaking of that movie movie aspect, you know, The Flying for me was absolutely one of the highlights of the film and sort of sets the bar for what, you know, Hollywood doesn't seem to be able to have nailed down correctly. You guys achieve what we assume looks and feels like real flying. Can you talk to us a little bit about how you achieve that effect? Sure. We. Uh, I've, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, superhero films and movies where you see people flying all the time and uh, I, 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 I felt like I'd never seen flying in, in, in as realistic of a way that um, I think uh, it would, what, you know, would be possible if you, could, you actually filmed somebody flying. You don't really get that sense of, of gravity and movement and, and moving through the sky. So we uh, uh, looked at real life and tried to find, you know, because we couldn't find a good movie comparison to what we wanted to achieve, um, and we came to skydiving videos. And you look at skydiving videos, there it is. People are flying, but they're going down. So we needed to create a look where it felt like we were moving forward 
and we were having dynamic interaction and moving through clouds. So we created these uh, uh, big circular rigs that allowed the actors to kind of go into the, the middle section of it and spin around and do all kinds of, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 flying and spinning moves while our cinematographer set up this very complicated lighting rig that replicated what it would look like lighting wise to pass through diffused lighting when you're moving through a cloud and then suddenly it's hard lighting because you're not in a cloud and we used all the practical stuff that we invented on set to guide us in the, the uh, composite stage when we um, took it into CG and created the clouds in the sky. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you man. Right, thank Appreciate you. it. Film's great. Thank you so much. Who's making that sound? What is that? Please. All right, dude, we're going inside. Steve, wait up. Matt, look at this. Holy. Oh.